This is a submarine. Even though it looks simple, it has one huge advantage over other DIY submarines. I can control it with sound. You're probably thinking, why would I want to control a submarine with sound? Why not just use a radio controller? Well, radio waves don't travel well underwater. In fact, every other DIY submarine on YouTube has a tether that goes back to the surface because of this problem. But today, we're gonna stray from the beaten path and make a truly wireless remote control submarine. In a previous video, I made a proof of concept on how to control a motor with sound. But how can I control multiple motors with sound? Well, a comment on the previous video gave me an idea. Imagine I have three sine waves. One of them is a 400Hz tone, the other is a 600Hz tone, and the third is an 800Hz tone. By playing a combination of these three tones, I can tell the submarine what to do. For example, if I play a 400Hz tone on its own, it tells the submarine to go forward. If I play a 600Hz tone on its own, it goes backwards. If I play a 400 and a 600Hz tone, it goes left. By playing a combination of these three tones, I can command the submarine to go in any direction. Let's see it in action using this setup over here. I put the microphone on a laptop speaker, and we can see three zeros on our program because we aren't playing anything. Depending on what note I play, certain zeros should turn into ones. If I play a 400Hz tone, the first zero should change into a one. Now let's play the 600 hertz tone. An 800 hertz tone should make the third zero a one. The really cool part about this is that we can play multiple tones at once, and the software can still tell what's going on. It makes some mistakes, but it should work for now. Depending on the ones and zeros that the microphone is picking up, we can use the data to control the motors of the submarine. So far, things are working well. However, we're going to run into some problems when building the submarine. The microphone circuit is on a breadboard, and it has a hard time fitting inside the container. The wires could also come loose, and then the microphone wouldn't work anymore. While the breadboard is good for prototyping, it would be better if you used a printed circuit board. A PCB is a fiberglass board that has copper traces built into it, giving you the ability to turn your breadboard prototype into a small and reliable circuit. The circuit you see on top is exactly the same as the one on the bottom, but a fraction of the size. This particular PCB was made by PCBWay, who's a sponsor of this video. They offer full-feature custom PCB manufacturing services. I've never made a PCB before, and it was really easy to design this circuit on the computer and upload the files to PCBWay. The turnaround times are very fast. PCBWay also has custom machining and 3D printing services too, so if you've ever wanted to make something out of metal for a project, you can just upload your file to PCBWay. PCBWay and get it shipped to your doorstep. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. When I made this PCB, I actually made a couple of mistakes while designing it, but luckily there's a trick to fixing this. I simply drilled out the incorrect copper trace and then used a small wire to reconnect it to the right pad. Okay, so I assembled the submarine and ran into another problem. The separ motors are super loud. The container resonates like the body of a guitar, and the extra noise could make it impossible to control the submarine. The microphone simply can't hear the sine waves over the noise of the motor. I solved this problem by ordering some premium stepper drivers. Check out how much quieter the motors are now. It's finally time to put this boat in the water and see how well it works. We're gonna start off in a bathtub and for the sake of this demonstration, I won't be fully submerging the submarine. I'll also be using a waterproof speaker to play sounds underwater. Let's see how it does. If I yell at it, will it move? Oh!
Okay, so it's clearly having some problems. It responds to noise, but it can't seem to figure out what instruction I'm giving it. Also, when I stop playing the tones, it still keeps moving. This leads me to believe that the motors are still making a lot of noise inside the submarine. It's going to take some work, but I need to come up with a way of making the software side of this project more reliable. Nevertheless, I think this is a step in the right direction. I guess I'm in what you'd call integration hell. Every part of this project works on its own, but when combined, things fall apart. If you guys have any suggestions, I'm all ears and please comment what you think I should do. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video.